This is part two of, of a series of videos looking at the uh, uh, x-intercepts of a quadratic function. In a previous video, we observed that uh, in the function f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, if this discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, if it's zero, then there is exactly one x-intercept. If it's less than zero, then there are no x-intercepts, and if it's greater than zero, there's exactly two x-intercepts, and we gave it reasons for those. In this video, we're going to focus on finding those, actually finding the values of those x-intercepts. We'll look at four different methods. Uh, in this video, we'll look at one or two of those, and then we'll split this up into a number of videos. Every video does not work all of the time. For example, the square root method only works when the b value of the function is equal to zero. In other words, we're looking at ax squared plus c is equal to zero. Uh, so this method can be summarized as follows. We'll show these symbolically in this video and then in some other videos we'll do some specific examples. But if b is equal to zero, then we've got ax squared plus c is equal to 0, and we can solve for x by subtracting c from both sides, dividing both sides by a, and then taking the square root of both sides. Let's look at those details. Now remember that when we take the square root of both sides, we need to, I mean, when we undo this squaring, we need to consider the two possibilities that uh, the square root that we get on the other side could have either been a positive or a negative. Now notice something interesting here. This minus c over a needs to be a positive number for this square root to exist. So for example, 3x squared minus 4 is equal to 0 has two solutions. If you add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 3, then you've got a positive 4 thirds, and you get the square root of uh, plus or minus the square root of a positive 4 thirds is the two answers. You might ask yourself, what does it mean if uh, minus c over a is negative? Then, of course, algebraically it's saying that there is no uh, real solution, so there is no uh, x-intercept. Uh, what does that mean about the location of the vertex uh, and the concavity of the function ax squared plus c? The second method is the factoring and using the zero product property. We'll <coughs> just mention something here and then in another video we'll look at some examples in more detail. If we have the quadratic equation 15x squared minus 11x minus 14 is equal to zero, then, and we want to solve that, we, we can't just move things over to the other side because we can't combine the x's like we had up here where the x's were all combined and we could just isolate the x's and then find out what, what they were. In this case, we can't combine the x's, but, but sometimes, not always, this method doesn't always work, but sometimes you can factor the polynomial. In this case, the polynomial factors, as we've shown here, you can multiply it out and verify that that's the case. So one of the disadvantages of this method is that you've got to, to have some strategies for doing the factoring, and you've got to successfully factor the polynomial. Thing to ob now, the thing to observe here is that we've got two factors that multiply together and give us zero. That means that one of the factors must be zero, and, and if either one of them are, then the result would be zero. So that gives us two equations. Either 3x plus 2 is equal to zero, or 5x minus 7 is equal to zero, and each of those are easy, are easy to solve algebraically. So we subtracted 2 from both sides into 1 and divided by 3, so x could be a negative 2 over 3, or we added 7 to both sides and divided both sides by 5. x could be equal to 7 fifths. Okay, we'll look at the other two examples, uh, the other two methods for finding the x-intercepts or the solutions to a quadratic equation in other videos. Okay, see you then.